Good morning to all our SIA members to the Effective Online Auction Marketing webinar on Friday 11th November. Um, we are presented today are Dan Main of Bitpath and Nicolette Alexander also from Bitpath. I will hand over to Dan Main um, and he can introduce himself and tell you more about him. Thank you. Thanks, Sonia. Uh, I don't think I'm able to turn my camera on. Oh, yes, I am. There you go. Hopefully you can see me there. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Sonia. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be presenting to you uh, all today. There's a few people whose uh, names I recognise, so uh, hello to you all. Um, the presentation, I've got a, a, an introductory slide both for me and for Nicolette, who will be presenting uh, later on. But yeah, briefly, I've been in the auction industry since uh, the early 2000s, um, started with Henry Butcher, which became Go Industry Dove Bid, and then became Liquidity Services, uh, working as an appraiser there, and then later in the uh, Principal Deals Department. Um, spent some uh, time in South Africa as well on a, quite a few mining projects over the years, um, and now work for Bidpath and also the sister company, CA Global Partners, which is a industrial auction business so I get to work across those uh, two areas which is uh, where we've got some of the experience that I'll uh, share with you today. Now I'm going to try and share my um, PowerPoint screen here so if you just give me a second. Sonia can you just confirm that that's coming up correctly please? I'm going to assume that you can see that first slide there. Please let me know if you if you can't. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit about myself as I've just gone through. So the key aims for marketing for an auction company, we've got three areas that we uh, we look at. Really, we're trying to first and foremost probably promote the auction event that uh, is upcoming. We're also Additionally, trying to promote our companies to clients. You know, you want someone to find you based on uh, what you're doing in the industry. And then, in general, we should uh, seek to improve search engine optimization. So, effectively, how people are going to find us online, find our websites, find our auctions with a natural process. Um, and throughout everything, we want to measure it. We want to see how effective we're being, what we're doing, so we can uh, tweak it and constantly improve it. Um, in an ideal world, right in the centre, we'd be doing something that covers off all three of these. Uh, and I think if you're doing the auction promotion right, you often are covering off the bottom two areas as well. I'd say if there was one area that we were going to do uh, above many things, uh, a press release for us is always a, a good idea. It covers those three areas. It promotes your brand to potential clients. It's promoting the event as well that you're having, and also it should have a positive effect on search engine optimization. Um, there's an asterisk there because it's not always that straightforward, but in general, you'll find that when you're putting out press releases about your company and your auctions, it does help to improve the, uh, the links back to your website and it will help people to uh, find you in the, in the future as well. Now, except not every auction is necessarily going to be press worthy but you can try and find other angles to make it worthwhile putting out there, you know, a certain feature of an auction you're having, um, a new region you're working on, a certain volume you're doing, um, the hundredth auction you've ever had, anything like that. It's never a bad idea to try and find an excuse for uh, getting, uh, getting a press release out there. So these are some of the key other areas that we have to think about when we're promoting our auctions and our, and our company. Um, and I'll cover many of these uh, as we're going through this, uh, this document now. Uh, 
basically the key question I think for all of us should be where are our bidders coming from and I say that as opposed to website viewers or auction registrants it's the people who've got the money you know the people who have actually turned up on the day and are spending their money um, and I make a point of mentioning this because you know we can be led by the number of viewers but I'm conscious that when we've had marketing in the past, you can spend an awful lot of money on a marketing resource and it can generate a lot of viewers to your website, to your auction, but they don't always translate into bidders. And this is one of the reasons to um, to measure what you're doing, because you can see actually a big volume coming to your website doesn't doesn't always translate into uh, someone who's going to spend money. So it's important to get to the, get to the bottom of that. Um, talk about an example here, which was uh, probably quite a surprise to me a few a few years ago. Um, in relation to buyer databases, you know, you may be looking at this and saying, "Well, I've got a strong buyer database. I don't need to worry about uh, uh, promoting my auctions to to buyers, uh, to new buyers, that much." Um, I had an experience a few years back where we had three audio, visual, and broadcast auctions between the period of June and July. Uh, build up a very strong database, lots of interest, lots of promotion. Two months later, September, had another audiovisual broadcast auction. And my assumption was that it was going to be pretty much the same profile of buyers that we'd seen all through the summer. Um, but that statistic there, nine of the 10 biggest buyers registered in the two weeks before the auction as a result of additional promotion that had been done. So if we'd have relied on that historic database, we'd have missed out on definitely our, our biggest buyers across that sale. So I'm always looking at questioning the reliance on a buyer database. And we effectively treat every auction as though we have no buyers, as though we have to go out into the uh, market and, and find these buyers. So we want to measure everything. How do we do it? Um, you've got two aspects to look at. You've got the external measurements, which tends to be what a marketing supplier gives to you. You know, when you're buying the service uh, from them, be that banner ads or email marketing, they can tell you what their open rates, what their click through rate is. Uh, they can give you an indication of that before you buy from them, and they should do. Uh, and also, once you've had a campaign, they can tell you about that as well. And that gives you a, a broad idea of who's coming through from the marketing back to your, your website and your auction. Um, internally, you've got uh, some other tools that get into a lot more detail, I would say. Uh, Google Analytics is the is the main one. It's free. You know, I'd encourage anyone who's not got Google Analytics set up with their website to, to set it up. There's some great information through there. That tells you um, some information, which I'll go into more detail shortly, but everything from views through to the level of engagement of people on your website. And then if you're using the um, SIA platform, the BidPath uh, based platform, within the SAM software, we also have a referrer link. So any registrant, any bidder that you've got in there, there's a report that you can use that will tell you the last location they went to before they registered at your website. Um, it doesn't give you 100% of the results because many people may have been around uh, clicking on the auction before they register. But it's certainly a good indicator, and I'll show you a report based on that uh, later on in this presentation. Um, choosing where to spend your money, I think, can be one of the most difficult things when you're promoting an auction. And as I say, I've learned the hard way that you can spend um, huge sums of money. And actually, when you look at it, they can generate little or, or nothing at all, even to some uh, to, to your auction. So one of the ways to try and reduce this is to ask for some fairly detailed statistics in advance from anyone that you're going to be spending money with um, you can get statistics like open rates and click-through rates ctr that you can see here and what you're generally looking for is a, a click-through rate of about three percent or above that's the kind of industry standard of what uh, you'd hope to achieve if it's less than that then I would say go and spend your money elsewhere because you're not likely to see the kind of response that uh, that you're looking for there. Unless it's an unbelievably cheap or, or free resource, 
um, you really want to look for those higher click-through rates. And actually, this uh, top one here is a company that we work with quite frequently. And we said to them, what should we be asking potential marketing suppliers, potential email list suppliers for? And they said, ask them for a, um, a screenshot of the performance from their last uh, mailing program. Uh, it's very hard to fake a screenshot. Um, and it gives you a very good idea of the kind of performance levels that they achieve and yeah, stops you from having to spend money that's not gonna give you any benefit to your to your auctions. I mentioned Google Analytics before. Um, Google Analytics is changing its versions at the moment and so you're seeing some kind of old details here and some, some new details as well. The old term that was used to look at the kind of effectiveness of um, marketing by how long people are spending on your website was called the bounce rate. That's now been changed to engagement rate. So apologies, it's a little confusing. You'll get both of them referred to in this uh, document. But the most important one going forward and the one that exists, uh, will continue to exist, is the engagement rate. Uh, and that's a bit easier to, to follow. So this was a report uh, that we had for a specific marketing resource and you can see the green circles here i've outlined the statistics that are basically telling you this is a, a good uh, resource the bounce rate was very low you know we're looking for something below 30 40 percent and at 0.5 percent that's that's very low indeed um we've got the newer measurement down below there as well so we had a 65 percent engagement rate and three minutes spent on the the website so this is an external resource that we've paid for um, and we can track back and say, well, this was a pretty significant campaign. So it was ten, just over ten and a half thousand uh, pounds, and we can say it was costing us three pounds per page view. It was probably a lot less than that actually, because this campaign included multiple different uh, resources as well. And this is only one, looking at one aspect of it. So there's a good example. Alternatively, this is a, a bad example. Um, it's you know it makes for painful viewing really because we've spent spent money and this has generated very little um, as an outcome. We wouldn't use this uh, resource again, and I'd say possibly if we'd have asked them for their click through rate, then we could have identified this as being uh, not a great resource. But yeah, it's less than two percent and pretty low um, engagement time. The engagement rate is is okay. That's actually in line with some of the others. Uh, that we've looked at, but uh, yeah, per engaged session, it's um, pretty expensive, really. You know, it's not a uh, not a high number of people coming through at all. This one's a bit unusual in that it it conflicts between two different areas, um, and it's we can be open with this one. It's it's Facebook, and um, Facebook marketing is interesting. Um, I don't know how many of you do it. A lot of people have been skeptical. You know, you think how's someone going to come and buy a piece of industrial machinery? through uh, Facebook, but nevertheless, I have to say we've been using it consistently now over the last two years and it delivers results every time for relatively little money. I mean, this was a £5,000 campaign. That's the biggest one I've ever seen through Facebook. Normally you can spend between £500 and £1,000 on uh, Facebook and it's gonna generate decent results and is quite often a higher performer than, uh, than many other resources. Even though we're seeing a low engagement rate and a short engagement time, the numbers are so massive and the cost is relatively low that I would say it's still a worthwhile uh, resource to. So I'd recommend giving it a try, tracking it, seeing how, how it works out for you, how it works out across different industries. Um, and yeah, the great thing is you can spend a small amount of money to, to test it out. So that's just a summary there of the kind of key statistics, key things that you'd be looking at on uh, each of these different areas. Number one, as we said, is the good campaign. Number two is the bad campaign. And then number three, still good, even though the engagement level's low. Uh, and the price per engaged session there is you know, absolutely tiny, 16 pence, uh, even compared to the good one at three pounds. That's, that's pretty impressive. And you'll see as well, um, you have a short amount of uh, coming through the people that we can see generated by Facebook, we can track back using the referral links and see that, yeah, actually they've uh, 
they've been bidders actively buying through our auction. Um, this is a specific example. So the, the bid path referrer link that you see in the, in the SAM software, this is what I've used to get this report. Now, this was a, a project we did with Gordon Brothers last year on CA Global Partners business. Uh, the client was Man Energy Solutions in the UK. And what we've done here is we've looked at every bidder, we've looked at the referrer link, and we've seen where that bidder has come through. As I've said, it's not 100% effective. You will get some where it just says it's come through your own website. But the things that we can identify here, um, some have come from Gordon Brothers, the partner. Some have just come from Google, from finding us. And we'll, we'll come back onto that shortly. That's related really to how well your, your SEO is performing. Um, we've got Facebook paid at just under £2,000 there. That's probably an underestimate. And I think we spent... I'd be surprised if we spent more than £500 on this particular campaign. So straight away, we can see the return on investment there is, is pretty significant. The press release up at the top, 3000 spent by buyers there, auction news, another resource. Um, industrial bid is an interesting one I've mentioned there. That was a buyer for a major asset came through there. Um, an industrial bid is a combined marketplace for the Industrial Auctioneer Association in the US, where auctions are cross-listed. So... Again, another benefit of being on, um, you know, on a, on a combined, uh, similar to the, the, the SIA platform. Something else you can do if you want to go into detail with it is you can kind of, you can compare who's signed up or specifically registered for your auction around the times that your promotion has gone out. So this was um, an auction we did, Arena Television, at the beginning of this year. Um, there was a separate process. We started promoting it right from the beginning of the year because it was fairly newsworthy. Um, so we had a kind of simple registration process through a, a website we've created. And that's the beginning parts there in, in blue. So we can see when the press release went out, we got an uptick in registrants there. Then one of the marketing resources, Kit Plus, kicked in, some more there. Um, you could equally use this to track the, the, the bad marketing as well. You know, if you put something out and nothing's happened and you, you know it's not a good good result. Um, and then midway through this is when the catalogue actually went online and the orange sections are specific uh, registrants coming to us uh, and actually registering for the auction. Um, print marketing, it's... Uh, you know, a, a controversial area, I suppose. A lot of people are very keen on it. Uh, some companies don't do it at all. I'd say it's been several years since we've done any kind of print marketing at all. I think if you're in close contact with your buyers, you'll know which ones prefer printed media and uh, which ones don't. So I think, you know, I, you can have a fair idea of, of who it works for. Um, in general, I'd say go for publications that people are actually paying to to get you know magazines that people are paying for rather than free publications the performance tends to be better on the on the paid for um, and we're talking about measuring here as well so one way of measuring it is creating a specific url we'll put the example there if you had caterpillar as a client you could get the caterpillar.auction domain uh, i show this at a presentation earlier in the year so it's possible someone has, uh, has bought it now but at that time it was available there's other custom URLs that you can use in your print marketing so that you know if someone comes to that website, they have specifically seen you from um, a printed advert that you've done. And that's one way of being able to, uh, to measure that process. We talk about search engine optimization and I referred to press links uh, earlier, uh, press releases as being one way of getting um, links back to your website. Um, there's a lot you can go into here. It's a huge area, uh, but in general, I'd say it's worth looking at the domain rating of your website. A domain rating is a score given to you by um, a range of companies. Ahrefs is one on here. Uh, and it's a measure of how well your website performs, how many people, how many other websites are linking back to your site. And in general, the connection is the higher your domain rating, the more traffic you are likely to get from people naturally coming to you searching on Google or other search engines. One of the ways to increase this is by 
getting what's called backlinks, links back to your website from other websites. Uh, the press, links, press releases will help do that, but also if you're advertising uh, in other publications, then that's one way of generating links back. There's two kinds of links though, unfortunately, just to complicate it. You've got follow links and no follow links. Some websites that you'll advertise with will make no follow links. Unfortunately, that doesn't benefit you at all, but um, the follow links will increase the, the domain rating of your website. So I found three examples here um, of which I'm familiar, I know are in the South Africa region or certainly active in that region, where if you're advertising with these companies, that will have a positive effect on your website domain rating. Um, I've put the link here, the backlink checker at Ahrefs. I'd encourage everyone to go in and put their website into that and see how they're performing, see what links are coming back to their website. If you can find no follow links, you can always go back to these other websites and ask them to change it to a, to a follow link. Um, and what's also interesting is you can do it with your competitor's website as well. If you want to go and see how your competitor's advertising, um, what's working for them, you can do the same and take a look at it. Uh, so it can be a really useful tool. And just as an example, um, I've put some of the links back to our auction website, cagp.com, uh, most of which are coming from a combination of press releases or when there's been some news article about an auction that we've been doing. So you can see the recent ones, the 2022 Market Insider one was a press release we put out. 2021, um, bit of an obscure one, seven costly mistakes to avoid when selling a used car. We use a, a tool called uh, HARO, uh, which stands for Help a Reporter Out, where basically they send you um, lists of journalists looking to include people in articles, and you can say, yeah, you can help with this. So long story short, we submitted um, something to this article and it ended up going on this website. So that's now produced a backlink back to the, uh, the CAGP.com website. Um, particularly of note there is an article goes right back to 2001. So when you're getting these articles, these press releases out there, they can continue to benefit you for 20 years or, or more. And that will still help the domain rating on our website be, um, you know, be increased uh, even now, 20 years after it was uh, after it was featured. And I'm going to pass on to uh, Nicolette now, who I believe is also on the call. And Nicolette, I'll keep presenting if you like, but uh, just tell me when to uh, switch to the next slide. You might need to unmute Nicolette. Hello, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, <laughs> so got my camera and my mic on now. Um, yeah, I've been with BidPath for three years, uh, based quite a bit of studying and my experience around marketing specifically, not necessarily around auctions, but um, I did grow up bouncing around different warehouses and auction sites. And so I'm very, very familiar with the environment. Um, and yeah, it's been a, it's been a good time since I've been with BidPath. Um, and, uh, it was, yeah, Dan, really, really interesting um, hearing a bit about some of the auction specific stuff. Um, really helpful as well about a lot of the SEO and website stuff. I think also hand in hand, um, a, a big part as well. Um, obviously you've got auction specific marketing, but you know, also don't, don't forget about your brand down that route as well. So a bit more of what I'm gonna talk about is uh, specifically around your general branding, your website, your day-to-day -day marketing, the stuff that's ongoing important as well. Um, yeah, next slide. So basic marketing 101. Um, as Dan was saying, understanding your bidders is of high importance. You obviously want to deliver the type of content and things on your website and your marketing that is going to catch their eye and also convince them to you know, return for future auctions as well, wherever it's relevant. Um, so
uh, with Google Analytics, there's quite a lot that you can figure out. Uh, you know, you can look at different page views and, and if you're not familiar with Google Analytics or any of these tools, they're really, really good about providing free resources as well. So they have, you have Google Academy, they, you know, they do free online courses. It's all video based, very, very easy, very flexible. Um, so if you're not familiar with it and you haven't looked at it, don't, don't be afraid because there are tons and tons of free resources out there. Um, even the tool that Dan was referring to, Ahrefs, Moz.com, all of these different SEO tools, they all have blog pages, YouTube channels, some of them even have podcasts as well. Um, so if you don't know anything about it, don't be afraid. There, there are all the resources out there to easily learn it. Um, but yeah, I guess everything else, you know, again, understanding what people are looking for when they visit their website, once they're on your website, what pages are they exiting your website from, understanding what pages are leading bidders to your website. Um, so oftentimes it could be, you know, someone may find you through social media posts, they may find you through just the general search engine, they might find you through a blog page and then go to your homepage. So there's tons and tons of different options of how someone can get to your website or even to your catalog pages. Um, and then, yeah, track, measure and review everything. This is key because, you know, there's tons of data out there um, and it's really easy to start figuring out the trends based on your bidders and your website visitors. Um, as long as you track and measure it and, you know, come up with a regular review schedule to go through it. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much marketing 101 summed up. I mean, it's obviously a lot more extensive than that, but those are the basics. Um, you can click to the next slide, Dan. So yeah, all sorts of marketing you do, uh, at least on the digital, I guess in the print front as well, you ideally do want it to all lead back to your website at the end of the day. So whether you're going for SEO and keyword research, if you're doing paid ads on search engines, if you're doing paid social media ads, organic social media content, blog pages, <coughs> SMS, all of that, the goal is to get your prospective bidders to register online. So make sure all your marketing activity leads to your website. And like I said, monitor where they're coming from and, and what they're engaging with the most. You can go to the next slide. So for example, we, uh, an auctioneer in the UK, Flint's Auctions, they do uh, photographic and scientific instruments. Um, recently spoke to them. They were telling us, you know, for them, the website is their first point of uh, contact for 90% of their buyers, which is crazy. I mean, I'm sure as you all will have experienced, COVID probably has played a huge part in this. Everything's, you know, moving online, it's, you know, it, it is the, it is the future. So, um, but even outside of the, the bitter side, um, they also 60% of the lots, like in their upcoming auction this November came through vendors that found them through their website. So it's also, you know, it, it goes both ways in that sense. So it, the website is a key, key importance for all, all legs of your business. Um, yeah, next slide. So yeah, again, back to kind of delivering and understanding what your audience wants. This is, um, you have about 10 to 20 seconds on average to capture the attention of a website visitor. That's really, really short. That's a really short window. Um, so it just shows you how important it is to understand what's keeping your audience engaged and what gets them to register. And that'll be different based on different kinds of buyers. So, you know, figure out what people are looking for and maybe write a blog post about certain upcoming lots that, you know, you might see people clicking on certain lots in your catalog pages. And, you know, maybe that means you need to make a blog post about it. It'll come up on the search results and, you know, maybe people will enter them through that blog post and you can link to your catalog page and, and so on. So it's, it's all very trial and error, but it, it's really, really key to figuring out, you know, 
what do your, and, and it's different for everyone. So it's, it's, it varies from auctioneer to auctioneer in a lot of cases. So figuring out what your audience wants and being able to deliver it as efficiently and quickly as possible is um, pretty much the key to it. Next slide. And then the other side of it as well is you do want to have kind of an active, you know, set of communication with your bidders and also with the people that register for the auction, um, even if they're not bidding, but they are registering. So try and figure out what channels are your bidders active on. If you don't know, like I said, you can track it, trial it, adjust it, play around with it. It, you know, a lot of this stuff is kind of free on the organic front to set up and it's free to, I mean, it does take time, but um, you know, that a lot of these tools as well have the insights and everything bit, uh, built in. So it is relatively easy to track it and, you know, look, look at the trends. So whether that's, you know, through email, SMS, so, social media, at what points leading up to the auction, um, are these bidders active on the channels? So, you know, maybe they might not be active with your SMS marketing until a week before the auction, or maybe you want to use the SMS marketing on the day of the auction to, you know, keep in communication with the people who have registered, figure it out. And, you know, it, it, some, some of them may be sending you questions and, you know, Facebook messenger or Instagram DMs. It's, it's really, really varies based on um, your bidder demographic. Um, and yeah, think, look at as well, if you are already in communication consistently with your bidders, um, how do they engage with you and what content are they searching for? So for example, if you're sending out an email blast to your bidder base, um, look at those email insights and check which links are they clicking on in that email? What's the open rate? You know, what are those stats? Are, are, do people based on the statistics seem happy with the content you're putting out there or is there some sort of discrepancy? Um, and then, yeah, just around social media, it's, I know it's, it can be quite daunting, but you know, for some of, some of your bitter bases, social media might be really, really important. Like for example, with, um, with Flint's who I spoke about earlier in the UK, they are, if you ever check out their Instagram page, they are incredibly active on Instagram. They found, because they do a lot of antique cameras and, and um, scientific instruments, the, the people that are most interested in their products are active on Instagram and on YouTube. So they, they found out that if they do a lot of video content and kind of, you know, show these items in a video format, directly engaging with their followers, uh, they found a lot of success with it. And um, also these social tools give you a greater deal of insights as well into the demographics. So you can, in some ways, tailor it down even to gender and age group and other things which you might not be able to get from uh, other channels. So social media can be really helpful as well and figuring out which social channels are the best for you. So like as Dan was saying, Facebook has worked really well on the projects he worked on, but there might be another auction house that, you know, Facebook doesn't work for them. Their bidders aren't on Facebook. Um, so yeah, just figuring all of that out and, um, once you figure it out, it all sort of falls into place after that. Next slide. Yeah, so again, trial and error is key. Social media especially is free. So test and see what works and what doesn't on your channels. Uh, it's not the end of the world if you put a post out and you know people don't like it. it everything's very short attention span on the social channels. So you know, it, it's not going to have any detriment to your search engine ranking or anything like that. So it's, it's really, really flexible to kind of figure out works for you. Um, create a content plan if you can. Do some research into what followers are looking for. And actually, this kind of goes the same for your website and your blog pages. So there are, I don't know if, if there's a website called Answer the Public where you can search in a keyword and, you know, you'll see what sort of in literally question format, what sort of questions people are asking online and 
you might be able to tailor some of your content around that. Um, so there, there's tons of tools for that. If you have, if you don't have any social media presence, maybe have a look at, you know, likes and follows and how people are engaging with other auction houses in the section that you operate in. So, and obviously don't copy them, but like look to them for inspiration, but make sure at the heart of it, you're keeping something of your very own branding and show what makes your auction house special and how your brand stands out from the rest. Um, but there's nothing wrong with looking for inspiration and seeing, you know, what sort of, are people interacting better with a video link to YouTube or are they, you know, are they interacting better with photos? Are they, are they asking questions in the comments? Are they, you know, it's all about trial and error with social stuff. Um, and that, that's pretty much the basics of it. Next slide. Yeah, that, that's it from me. So uh, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add, Dan, um, but at least from my end, uh, there's all the tools out there. Um, there's tons of blog posts. There's a really good podcast as well um, by Target Internet, which they've got a great website as well with tons of resources. Um, and they do go into quite a lot of detail as well. Um, about digital marketing and also digital marketing trends month on month. So um, if that's somewhere, if you listen to a lot of podcasts, that's a really good one to start with. Thanks, Nicola. Thanks, Thanks Sonia. Sonia. I don't know if you... Dan, um, it was a very informative information. And I'm sure all our members got some very valuable points from both of you. Um, I will allow any uh, questions uh, um, at this point. You can either put it in the chat group or just show a react, put up your hand and we can unmute you. I put my, uh, if anyone wants to connect on LinkedIn as well, please do feel free to reach out. Hopefully you can see it on my uh, screen there. Got a question from Philip Powell. I'll unmute Philip now, just a second. You should be able to speak, Philip. I think Philip's still muted, looking at the... Uh... I have abled his mic. I'm just trying to. So he needs to mute, unmute himself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi. Hi, sorry about that. Thank you very much, Dan and Nicolette, for a wonderful review. Um, just as a 20th century techno dinosaur, can you please just uh, help me, you know, understanding what you've delivered, who I actually engage with locally to um, go through these points from a marketing point of view. I don't have a team. I've just got Mark uh, who helps me and Sonia. And I just need to know, um, you know, what, how do I address these points in a nutshell and get their review on what they're going to do to highlight an upcoming auction and what the costs will be. Can you help me on that or advise me where to direct my, my query? Yeah, I think, um, so first of all, feel free to reach out to, to one of us with, uh, with any of that. I think for th things like um, getting set up on Google Analytics, we can uh, probably give you some pointers there or we can refer you to uh, somewhere to where there's uh, resources to set it up. If you have a, a company or an individual that manages your website, there are some instructions that can be given to them, for example, that are relatively straightforward for them to implement and then they should be able to get that 
that set up for you. So yeah, anyone anyone who's responsible for managing your website should pretty much be able to get you 99% of the way on there on that front. Um, in terms of if you're any other marketing, anything else you're you're looking at, again, I'd put it on the uh, on the company that you're speaking to. If you're asking someone who uh, potentially could send out an email blast for you, then I would get them to give you all of that detail about their uh, click through rates. And again, we can we can provide a summary of what you what you should ask them for. You know what key details, and it's pretty pretty straightforward. It will just be a case of saying to them. Uh, give me give me these numbers these these rates um, and then let them respond back to you and you can assess whether or not that's worthwhile and we've got some indicative scores as well of what's a good rate and what's a what's a bad rate that you can use does that does that answer your question Philip? it does indeed thank you very much i'll i'll go through the resources i've got locally the question the last question i want to ask you is those that information that you've just given me now is going to really hone in on a kind of a local market base. Um, I don't need to go broader than a local, local meaning South African um, base through our normal channels. But I've got a quite an interesting auction coming up, which merits an international review. And I'd like you to, uh, to discuss it with you when the time is right. It's a, um, it's a collectibles auction of um, very exclusive and rare toys and things of from the early 20th century right up till today. And it's it warrants an international um, a, appeal because too big for a local a local market and it will be over a thousand twelve hundred lots. And, and I would like to also not just throw everything together, but maybe you can help me how we I t catalog it and how we condense it and what the best way from your perspective is from marketing and how to go about it. But I'll do that with you in the new year. Great, sounds good. Yeah, I think Nicolette and I would be happy to be uh, and uh, help as much as we can on that. F fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm going to sign off and say thanks again for your time and um, your help. And I hope my mark will uh, understand exactly what you're talking about. In, <laughs> I don't speak Mandarin. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a Thank great you. Weekend. Thank you, Philip. Bye. Anyone else? I don't see any other hands up. Um, I will take the opportunity just to encourage our members that's still online um, to look at the BitPath Sire Bit online platform that we have designed. If you have not signed up already, please go look at the offerings that we've got. It's a um, very cost effective, reliable online bidding platform to use. If you need more information on the online bidding platform, um, please send me an email and I can share with you all the information. There's currently a special that we are running for the first 10 signups. You, um, the cost will be 2,500 Rand and 1% um, of the auction proceeds. So please, I do encourage all our members to sign up for the SAI online bidding platform. <coughs> All right, well, I don't see any um, other hands. Um, Nicolette and Dan, if you have anything else to share or add, um, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we can call the webinar uh, to an end. It's all good from my end. Uh, yeah, if anyone else has more questions, feel free to send any of us an email. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Feel free to reach out afterwards. But yeah, it's all good from me. Thanks. Thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, any questions can be directed at me, sonia.steiger at auctioneering.co.za. 
and I will forward it on to the relevant parties and provide you with feedback. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you all will have a wonderful weekend um, and let's get some business in next week. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.